Hi, Pete here from Club Engineer. In this talk through, we're going to write the code to find the can. But first, let's look at the finished program in action. Here the robot's following the line. It detects silver and it exits the line following part of the program. It moves forward to the center of the green tile or the spill zone. It moves to the edge of the spill zone. It moves back to the center of the spill zone. It rotates slightly and it repeats. And you can see by doing that over and over again, eventually it'll hit the can and push it out of the spill zone. Let's break that down into its individual steps. The program follows the line and when it detects silver, it exits the line following part of the program. It moves forward to the center of the spill zone. It moves to the edge of the spill zone. It moves back to the center of the spill zone. It rotates slightly and it repeats. And by repeating that process, it will eventually find the can. So we have to write the code that causes the robot to stop following the line and start finding the can. We use the silver as a trigger to change parts of the program. That's a bit tricky, so we'll do that as the next step in a following talk through. For now, we'll look at just finding the can. And the first part is to get the robot moving forward to the center of the spill zone. Start a new program. I'm going to call it find the can. Find hyphen the hyphen can. So we're writing a small test stub of a program just to get this one idea working. We want the robot to move forward to the center of the spill zone. So I'll grab a move block. I'll set its motors to A and C. I'll set it to forward. I'll set it to say 50% uh, power. And let's try one rotation. Compile, upload and run. And as you can see, one rotation isn't quite enough to take us to the center of the spill zone. So let's change this to, uh, let's say, two rotations. Compile, download, and run. And you can see two rotations is slightly too far. So taking a guess, we'll make this say 1.8.8 rotations compile, download and run and you can see 1.8 rotations is about perfect. So, to the next bit of this program. We need to move forward until the robot detects the edge of the spill zone. So we'll do that with a move block. Again, set its motors to A and C. I like a power of 50, that seems to be giving a good result. We want it to move forward until the light sensor is triggered. So that means running the motors for unlimited. Uh, we need a weight block. We want it to wait for the light sensor. On my robot, the light sensor is plugged into port 1. We'll wait for it to read a value, uh, say, greater than 50%. When the light sensor detects that value greater than 50%, we want to stop the motors. So again, we're going to stop a and C. We'll compile, download and run and see how that program looks. There we go, the robot goes forward to the center of the spill zone, it goes to the edge and it stops. Good. Now the robot's on the edge of the spill zone, we need to bring it back to the center. So we'll do that with uh, another move block. Once again, ports A and C, we want it to move, we want the robot to move backwards. Um, we found that 1.8 rotations was about right moving uh, forward, so let's try 1.8 moving back. Compile, download and run. And we can see it's moving slightly too far. Now uh, that makes sense because the forward from the silver to the center of the spill zone had to move the front wheels uh, forward and get the robot over the center. Um, the robot started off back over the uh, silver so it had to go like a half robot body extra. Uh, so let's try instead of 1.8, perhaps 1.5 will do the trick. 0.5, compile, download and run, and that looks pretty good.
Now we want the robot to rotate uh, slightly on the spot. So we'll drop a move block down uh, and we'll crank up the turn ratio uh, right up as high as it will go. That will make the robot rotate on the spot. We'll set the power to 50. We'll compile, download and run. And oh dear, that's going, uh, that's going way too far. So um, let's have a think. One rotation is, is way too much, so let's perhaps try 0.2. Compile, download, run. Ah, 0.2's looking uh, pretty good, except it's the robot is rotating away from the can instead of towards it, so we'll change the direction that it rotates by cranking the turn ratio up the other way. Try it one more time. Compile, download, and run. It's looking good. Uh, let's just make it one small uh, additional tweak. We'll make it rotate at 0.1 rotations, 0.1 at rotations of the wheels instead of 0.2. And that will mean the robot turns on the spot uh, around about 10 degrees. The final piece of this program is to repeat the process. So we'll do that by adding a uh, loop block and we'll add it in between the block that takes the robot from the silver to the centre of the spill zone. We'll then move these one, two, these five blocks by clicking uh, with the shift key held down. That selects them all. See the blue border around them. Pick them up and we'll drag them into the center of the loop block. So this will repeat the process of um, going forward until the edge of the spill zone is detected, stopping, going back and turning slightly. We'll compile, download and run and look at that we can see that the robot's moving forward, center of the spill zone, finds the edge, goes back, rotates and repeats until it eventually touches the edge of the can and with a couple of attempts it manages to push the can off the edge of the spill zone. Let's have another shot with the can in a, uh, in a slightly different location. Forward, I'll just speed the video up a touch here and it pushes the can off. First attempt didn't work, second attempt did. My can actually is, uh, is it's a full softening can. I haven't gone to the trouble of emptying it and filling it with the right weight of rice. So the, it's taking a little bit more effort on the robot's behalf to push it off the edge. One more try. We'll move the can over to the left hand side of the spill zone this time. And to make the process quicker, we'll change the robot to rotate to the left instead of the right. And it pushes it off the spill zone successfully. Good. That completes the first step of the process of finding the can. Uh, in the next talk through, we will have a shot at detecting the silver. But before then, implement this yourself and we'll talk to you soon. Good luck. The material we're covering in these talk throughs is hard and sometimes, in spite of your best effort, you may find that you're stuck. Often, it only takes a small amount of face-to-face -face help to get you back on track. If you think you'd benefit from face-to-face -face help, then open your web browser and type clubengineer.org slash help. You'll see a list of times and places where face-to-face -face help is available. At these sessions, you'll get all the help you need to get back on track. You may also meet like-minded young engineers such as yourself for collaborating on projects down the track. Face-to-face -face sessions are run over the school holidays and after school during term time. They're available for all ages from years 5 to year 12. We also run face-to-face -face sessions for teachers and mentors. We'd love to meet you at one of these sessions and learn what you have been building.